What I'm going to demonstrate now is a ring seal. I have uh, a tube inside of another tube and I'm going to seal them uh, together, fuse them together. Uh, this will be uh, uh, two or more videos edited together. In my first attempt at the ring seal, uh, it worked fine, but I forgot to put the sodium filter uh, on my camera, so you, you miss a lot of the details because of the uh, orange flare from the sodium. Uh, so for the prep work, uh, again, I have that spacer uh, that, I, that I talked about. Uh, I've got this uh, purple uh, tubing on the inside and uh, boro co colorless borosilicate on the outside. Uh, I have this all hooked up to a blow hose. And there are several ways to make ring seals. Uh, this is uh, a, you know, a, a very standard way from what I've seen, uh, both from my own experience and from uh, reading uh, different scientific glass uh, textbook. Uh, all I've done a little differently is created a little spacer uh, that will help me uh, keep the uh, inner glass uh, tube uh, centered uh, so it's not wobbling around or anything like that. You can do this with cardboard and that's how I was taught how to do it. The only problem with that is uh, with, a, with a narrow tube like this getting the cardboard in and out is, is very difficult. So uh, I came up with this idea of just using this glass spacer. So now I'm going to go ahead and heat uh, the bubble right here, fuse uh, these two pieces of glass together, and then I'll pop the center and then just torch anneal it from there. Uh, eventually this series will turn into uh, making uh, scientific glassware, uh, a gas bubbler or cold trap, uh, or a reflux condenser or other scientific uh, apparatus that require uh, the ring seal. So I'm starting off by heating uh, the glass but I'm but I'm at a distance just to warm this up. The inner tube because it is uh, some artistic color glass, it is borosilicate, uh, but it is uh, significantly thicker than the tubing that I'm fusing to so I have to be very careful about that uh, to make sure uh, that they fuse together, get the walls uh, even, otherwise that will create a lot of stress and then that will become a problem. Just that, there we go. You can see the bubble is collapsing as these two start to fuse together. Now I'm going to use my blow hose to give it a little puff of air, bring it back. I'm going to do this a couple times. So you can see I've got my ring seal, I've, I've opened up that central hole. Uh, now what I could do is uh, fuse some tubing here to make a connection uh, if I was making this into uh, scientific glassware, but again this is just for a demo uh, of this first part. So now what I'm going to do is give it a torch anneal.
and now I'm placing it into my toolbox that has uh, fiberglass blankets, so I'm covering it with the fiberglass blankets. Now, uh, here is uh, a ring seal I made earlier today uh, using the same method, and this is by far the best ring seal uh, I've ever made in my life. Uh, so using this method of having this inset uh, is without a doubt uh, worth, worth the trouble of, uh, of the, uh, the setup. Uh, some drawbacks are, well, and I'll show this later, uh, you have to make this end set yourself, of course, and you have to make it specific to whatever you're trying to do uh, as far as the project. What I want to do with these uh, is make uh, some uh, oil bubblers as well as eventually uh, make some uh, reflux condensers. Uh, out of these. And so I made this little inset earlier today where I cut it to length and I put a couple dimples in here so that way when you put the tube in it seats in here but it can't fall through. Let me... Oh, if I remove the, uh, the Kim wipe so you can see that it's not the Kim wipe that's holding it in place, uh, it's these two little indentations that I've made. Uh, the purpose of this, uh, again, little piece of Kim wipe is that there's a little bit of play and that's intentional, so that way you just sink, uh, cinch it down by uh, wrapping a little bit of uh, Kim wipe there. Could be, you know, thin cardboard or anything else. And then now you've got it. All right, so, oh, this. Ooh, that's a little bit wide. That's not going to work. Let's see, this one's better. Yeah. So now you're good to go. Obviously, if you don't get the sizes correct, uh, then your your little uh, jig uh, isn't isn't going to be worth anything. But uh, if you're trying to make a series of uh, 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 test pieces so you learn the fundamentals. So in this case, what I'm trying to, uh, to, uh, to get experience on to learn the proper technique is for making that ring seal. Uh, so having a, a series of uh, pieces of glass that have all been pre-cut and fire polished to the same size. So the outer tube is uh, seven inches. It's 18 millimeter uh, in diameter. Uh, seven inches long. Uh, the inner is about eight or nine uh, millimeters in diameter. The color glass is about eight and a half to eight. Uh, the color less that I've also used is nine millimeters in diameter uh, and about four inches uh, in length with a little bit of a flare. And the goal, in this case, all I'm trying to do again is make a good ring seal. But from this ring seal, I can pop a hole here, add, or actually pop a hole at the top, pop a hole in the side, seal it at the bottom, and now you've got an oil bubbler uh, or a vacuum trap. Uh, if you make another ring seal at the bottom, uh, this gets you to where now you're making a reflux condenser. And I will show examples of this uh, as I get uh, further along in this project. But uh, right now, this ring seal has not been annealed and there are several ways again to make a ring seal this is a ring seal I was practicing the other day and oops yeah so uh, uh, this is a case where uh, the interface between the green glass and my blank uh, was a cold seal. It wasn't a proper ring seal and it broke when I basically picked it up today. Uh, so 
finding the best way to do it. And, and I will put some uh, description and potentially some links uh, in this video uh, because I have seen at least half a dozen methods of making a ring seal that uh, some are very similar, some uh, are radically different in, in how, how the operation is performed. But at the end of the day, if you do it right and you get a good seal, it's uniform, no stress, uh, and it's, it's very well aligned. Uh, this is a little bit wobbly, uh, but uh, that's because I didn't have the Kim Wipe uh, really uh, positioned uh, the, the way I should have uh, on, on this first go, but that's okay because all I really wanted was the ring seal to be good. Uh, so the fact that, yeah, there, there's several ways to do this uh, can be very useful and it can also be very frustrating because uh, you watch somebody make it in what looks like an or unorthodox manner and they do it and it's fantastic and then you try and follow that method and it doesn't work or you fail at it. You have, what you have to take into account is that person has probably been making you know ring seals and doing glass blowing uh, for 10, 15, 20 or more years. So if they use a slightly unorthodox method relative to what's you know uh, in uh, uh, scientific glass blowing textbooks, they're they're able to do that because of their level of skill and dexterity and just how well they know how the glass is going to behave. Uh, so my goal is to make uh, quite a few of these and eventually, right now I, I mentioned this is 18 millimeter with 9 on the inside. I do want to expand this out and make some larger ones. Uh, this is 24 millimeter, but to use this method I'm going to have to build uh, a new jig specific for this diameter of glass and then whatever the length I want. Uh, so that will be something I'll put in a uh, later video, but uh, making a ring seal, uh, if you don't have a lot of experience, the way you can cheat, as it were, is by preparation. What you want to do is you want to, like I said, with this jig, the purpose of this whole setup is to make it as easy as possible for me to make the ring seal. If I don't have that tube uh, basically under control and aligned, uh, as I make the ring seal, it, it flops all over the place and it starts to become, like I said, a huge headache. If you've got cardboard stuck up on here, uh, it, it, you know, putting it in and taking it out can also be a pain, especially with uh, more narrow diameter tubing. Uh, so this is a method that I'm going to try and expand on going forward. And I know uh, glass blowers have used variations of this method where they might have like a piece of rubber hose attached here and use that in conjunction with a cork uh, or something else. But as I was thinking about this today, I realized, hey, you know, a little piece of glass. And you can see my, my jig doesn't quite fit in here. And that's because when I removed it, uh, this was still a little bit hot. So I removed it too soon. Uh, and that's how it got off center. At least that's, that's my, my th thought process right now. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to make the dimples that uh, are used to uh, seat uh, the uh, inner tube uh, for the bubbler or condenser. Uh, so I basically want to make a, another set uh, of these insets. Uh, that way uh, uh, I, can, I can modify them or make multiple uh, uh, condensers uh, without having to uh, keep pulling them out. So I've made two marks on either side, again, to match that. Uh, I'm going to heat it really hot in one spot, gently push to get about halfway, flip it over, and then do the same. Uh, normally, you'll actually see it divided into three in many cases for glass blowers when they do this technique. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to overthink it. All I need is just a small indentation to, to seat this. It doesn't even have to be, uh, in my situation, uh, all the way to the center. Uh, in other words, halfway on each side uh, because of the diameter of the tubing. So first, I'm just going to warm this up a little bit like this. And I don't want to lose those markings just yet. So now I come in heat it strongly in that spot. There we go. 
and then give it just a little bit of a push. Okay. Uh, again, I'm doing this at a, at a bit of an awkward angle to try and keep this in the frame of the camera. So I heat up the spot, come out, give it a little push, and there we go. Uh, now, again, uh, if I want, I can give it a little bit of an anneal or anything like that, but again, for this part, I'm not really concerned about anything like that. Uh, so, there we go. Uh, being able to make these type of indentations in the glass uh, is is not decorative in scientific glass blowing. Uh, these are used in Vigoro columns. These are used in condensers to have a place on the inside uh, to pack in uh, steel wool or other other types of media that you might want uh, in your chemical apparatus for one reason or another. Uh, they basically again for a Vigoro column they give you surface area. Uh, for uh, condensation. So uh, this is actually something I'll, I'll probably make a video of this later of practicing this technique of making a spot, pushing it down, moving to the next one, pushing it down and going from there uh, to really get a feel for how the glass has to move uh, or how it has to be heated to get it to properly move.